Hi friends, hope you are doing well. So today I'm going to make a video in response to a viewer's question and this is about should they do a second PhD and this is a rather amazing question if you think that one PhD itself entails such a large amount of effort and work and so on. But in fact there are few people who have done a second PhD and I actually know some people like this from my personal experience. So let us look at some situation where a second PhD may be something which you can consider doing and let's look at 10 possible scenarios where something like this is possible. So now the number one case is sometimes people simply get attracted to a well-paid PhD and there are some countries in the world such as Denmark, Norway, Switzerland and even US to some extent which pay pretty good salaries to PhD students. So there are people who are PhDs from certain parts of the world where they are not doing very well economically and so on and they actually use the PhD as a way to migrate. So I know some people for example from some of the former Soviet Union countries such as Tajikistan and Ukraine who actually came to US to do a PhD and they actually had a PhD beforehand. So this is a case where people are essentially using the PhD as a route to immigration and very often what happens is that their previous PhD was something which didn't result in any journal publications or they published a paper in some local language journal which is not internationally known and so they really think that they are somebody who has a graduate level of degree they have a master's degree and they apply like that and they can get their PhD. Of course some people are going to question as to why this person is doing a second PhD but do remember that there are certain institutions and professors who are very happy to take somebody who already has a good level of expertise in a certain field and they can let this person have a second PhD. There is no ban on that. Now the second thing I have seen is about field change and this is often from people who have done their degree in some science discipline and they want to do their next degree in some marketable discipline. So I have seen people switching from physics to data science, from statistics to data science, for example, and even from disciplines such as English to linguistics, English to computer science, psychology to management, and so on. So it may be that you have done a PhD maybe many years ago, you have been working in the industry or in some place, and you feel that you are bored, you are jaded, and you want to do a second PhD in some different subject. And suppose you are able to get funding for this second PhD, you can go and do such a PhD. So I have seen this in case of some people. They also use the fact that universities are a good way to hide during recession. So maybe things are not doing well in your discipline. Maybe you did your PhD in something like nuclear physics, and there are no more jobs in this area and then you think about doing a PhD in finance and using Monte Carlo simulation for the financial market and for getting a job in a hedge fund. So there are people who do this kind of thing. Now do remember here that there are certain opportunities where you can do a doctorate instead of a PhD and what happens with some doctorate degrees is they are given for a combination of research as well as experience you have built up. So if you are in some field such as nursing or management or leading some kind of educational institution or even you have done a lot of work in non-profits or something like that, you may be able to get a doctorate in this area without necessarily doing all the work which you do in a narrow field PhD. So keep the doctorate also in mind. There are some differences between the doctorate and the PhD. I have made a video on that. I'm going to leave that in the end screen. Now the number three point is moving abroad and this is especially used by certain people who are in some countries where there is a strong pressure to migrate abroad. So I know for example of people who migrated from Bangladesh to US and from Egypt to Canada using this kind of second PhD and essentially what these people were doing is that they were in some lecturer job in their home country they had a PhD from there, but they did not have any papers and so on. So they decided to do a second PhD abroad and they were able to migrate to that country to do the second PhD and have a second career basically. 
Now, the fourth reason is that degree is not recognized in the new country. And I have seen this in some cases, especially in Europe, because some of the systems in Europe are pretty rigid. And so they may actually require the PhD to be obtained in a European Union country or something like that. This is especially so in certain fields such as life sciences and medical sciences where there is a lot of bureaucracy and there are a lot of certifications and rules. Now, in fact, I actually knew a person who was from Bangladesh who was actually teaching in a historically black college in USA. And this person had a PhD, I think, from Dhaka University. But the problem was that this person's PhD was not held in very good regard by this particular university. And so he was not getting a permanent position. He was stuck in an adjunct type of position. So what he did is that he did his PhD again from this historically black university. And so what he was able to do is that once he was able to complete this PhD, which was again in the same discipline, I think mathematics, he was able to get a longer term position there, which finally led to his tenure. So again, this is a situation which can happen. Unfortunately, it may never be spelled out verbally. But what happens is that if you have a PhD from a certain obscure country, at least obscure with respect to some developed country, then they may not recognize that degree without telling you so. And in that kind of situation, if you were to do the PhD degree again, that would be very advantageous. And do remember that there are various colleges in different countries which will give you a PhD with a small amount of research work and maybe if you write a couple of journal papers. So this is something which has been used by certain people. Now the number fifth point is job in new location. And again, this is a kind of desire to move abroad. But there are some people who essentially treat the PhD as a job. And that is another way to look at it. You actually can take on a PhD in a different location, in a different country, in a different discipline without actually thinking of finishing the PhD. So I would personally not recommend this because it would be somewhat appropriate. But I do know some people who actually applied to a PhD program. For example, this person was in Kerala and he applied to Norway. And after doing his PhD for a year or so in computer science area, he actually left the PhD program to get a job in the IT sector. Now, this is a little bit shady activity, but there are people who do that. I know another person from Punjab who actually moved to Canada in this manner. So again, these are situations which are possible, but they are a little bit troublesome because the PhD advisor who is giving you a scholarship or a grant in good faith is probably going to get very upset when you do this kind of thing. And so there may be also some consequences with respect to visa and all. So I would certainly not encourage you to do this. But unfortunately, there are people who do this. Now, the number six point is work with a great scientist. And this is a bug which gets certain people, some people have done a PhD, but they feel their PhD has been very mundane. They, they are not satisfied with their supervisor, with their publications and so on. And they feel that they have a lot of potential only if they could get a good guide. They are essentially in search of a good supervisor. And in this kind of case, they apply to some foreign country very often or in their own country. And they want to work with somebody who may be, for example, a Nobel Prize winner, an Abel Prize winner, somebody who has got the Fields Medal, or any of the top fellowships in the country, be they this IEEE fellow or ACM fellow or something like that. This, I feel, is a legitimate reason to think of a second PhD. But do keep in mind that you could also probably do a postdoc in this kind of situation. And the postdoc would be more free in terms of your freedom you could actually escape a postdoc if you did not like the situation and you could probably get paid much better also if you were doing a postdoc compared to doing a PhD. But again, there are some people who make this decision and then it's up to them. It's their life. Now, the number seventh point is you need some formal training to work in a certain area. And again, this can happen in fields such as nursing, such as life sciences, such as taking care of children taking care of people with special needs and so on. So there are a lot of fields out there in psychology and involving the care of persons with special problems, 
which actually would require a degree and a certification. And very often what happens is that if your PhD is from some different country or in a completely different field and you want to break into one of these systems, then you may consider doing another PhD here. So this is another possibility. Now the eighth reason is fill in a career break. And this has happened to some people. Again, it is often related to moving somewhere else, maybe to a distant town, maybe to a different city, a different country. And if you are a woman or even a man and you are moving with somebody who is your partner or spouse, then what may happen is that you may not be able to get a job in that area. So one of the things you could of course do is that you could do a PhD at the local university. So again, this is something which has been done by many people and what this can do is that it can keep your resume alive for a period of three to five years. Do remember that, of course, it would be a good idea that you finish the PhD in these cases because unfortunately I know some people who started on this and were not able to finish the degree. Now, this is, of course, an unfortunate situation, but things like this can happen to anybody. So it's very hard to blame anybody concerned here. Now, the number ninth point is much better PhD. And this again is something which people do. Maybe your previous PhD was completely written in a local language. Maybe you did your PhD in Mongolia or you did it in Serbia or you did it in Nigeria. And then what has happened is that you want to do a much better PhD from maybe Switzerland, maybe Norway, maybe US in these cases also. It's probably a good idea to do a PhD if you are able to do that. So again, if you get paid for this kind of thing, it is okay. It will probably consume three to four years of your life. But what would happen is that you would get an interesting experience in a foreign country and you would also get another degree which can greatly boost your chances for success around the world. Finally, the 10th point I have seen is sometimes people want to do something which is pretty new, which is pretty interesting. And this could be in something like a totally different language. So I know of people who wanted to do a PhD in the Sanskrit language. So essentially they had to go to certain places in India to do a PhD here. And these were people who actually had a PhD in math, but they wanted to do something like this in their middle age. And they basically wanted to read various scriptures. So again, if a bug like this comes on you, then one of the things you can do is that you can spend time doing a PhD. So you could do your PhD in any of the languages in the world. You could do your PhD in Russian. You could do it in Japanese. You could do it in Finnish. You could do it in Hungarian, for example. And most of the time, the universities in these countries would be very happy to let you do a PhD in that particular language, especially if you're from a foreign country. Now, sometimes what happens is that these guys are able to become scholars and they are also able to join the foreign services in their own country or in some different country. So these were some of the ideas I had about doing a PhD after having done a PhD. Now, all these are very peculiar cases. So keep this in mind that when you're doing a second PhD after a first PhD, you are essentially saying, that your first PhD was not sufficiently good. And one of the things you can of course do to mitigate the situation is that you can do a postdoc after your first PhD. But if you feel that you are not qualified for a postdoctoral position, that your resume is very weak, you do not have any journal publication, your supervisor is not good, you can't get letters of recommendation and so on, you can think of doing a second PhD somewhere else, but do it after a lot of thought because you don't want to start something and then not complete it. So this was my video for today and I will see you in a video sometime soon. See you then.